All right, thanks for being here. I've been awaiting for this interview. I was in New York when the story broke, and I couldn't wait to get home to talk with Clint Hickman. He's joining us. He's the chairman of the County Board of Supervisors. Um, first of all, thank you for coming in and talking about this. Hey, Mike, uh, I, 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 do, I was anxiously waiting for you. I, I just want to give you a little bit of uh, credit, too. You've been following this, uh, of what has transpired. You've had people on your show uh, that maybe I didn't see eye to eye with, and you gave them a fair hearing. I appreciated that, and I just thought I need to. Everyone's trying to talk to me. Um, everyone's trying to talk to the board, and it's said everybody can talk to everyone else, but I just know that I'm going to wait for Mike. I want to appear in your studio, looking at you face to face, and making sure that we have a good discussion. Well, I appreciate that. I want you to hear something. I played this earlier this morning um, on uh, April 8th of last year uh, when the I think the interim report came out on this. We had the former Attorney General Mark Brnovich on the show, and I asked him, you're going to hear my question about widespread fraud in his answer, and then I want to get your first comment to that. In this report, did you find any evidence of widespread fraud? What the report basically did was provide an initial update to Senator Fan regarding our initial review of the um, 2020 election. Now, as you know, Mike, and I've said this from the beginning, and a lot of folks on the left and right have been critical, is that look, I'm limited what we can say while we have investigations ongoing. So I'm not going to reach a con- legal conclusion. <laughs> What's your initial reaction to that? After seeing the report, he, he had those findings. Um, so uh, it, <laughs> just par for the course, you know, uh, speaking – Speaking, I guess, in tongues a little bit. Um, and that's that's the unfortunate and the frustration uh, that I've felt, especially reading this report. Let me just tell you, you know, I've been asked about this. What do you, what do you guys think about this report? Now, I can just say personally, um, I was happy for the first uh, five minutes that it finally has come out. Uh, then, I, then I've had anger every, every sentence. And then knowing what he had and then deciding to uh, change the total, uh, the total findings and then appear on right wing radio and keep us, uh, keep us on hanging, dangling on the meat hook. And when I say us, uh, not just the four, uh, not just all five, really, but not just the four Republicans. Uh, not just the county recorder that it was a Republican is is a Republican now, uh, but for all of our election workers, um, we were trying to find out too. You know, we were we were coming up on running another election, and if there were some sort of findings, we wanted to know those. We would we want to get better. We want to get better at this job. So, I I just think it's almost like a, the separation of, are you political? Are you a political servant or are you a public servant? And I think my colleagues do the best we can to always know what our jobs are. And this, absolutely, the suppression of this report uh, and, and, and then to leave it to another AG to finally expose it and then say, oh, well, that's because political. Uh, I'm absolutely, I said it in my words, I'm disgusted and that's where I remain. I'm absolutely disgusted. And now I'm getting questions about, hey, what, what does the board want to do about uh, disbarment? Well, why does it have to be us people, us board members uh, that needs to make a decision? Well, we're public servants. But why isn't the entire legal community coming out and saying, this is the top elected law enforcement official in the state of Arizona and he has suppressed a report that might have gotten some people down the line and sure maybe they would have voted different uh, but th- this is my anger why does it have to be us on the meat hook and then we take the abuse um, so I'm calling out to the legal profession here I'm calling out to business leaders is this what you want is this the kind of people that you want in government? If that's the kind of person you want in government, you don't want me in government. That's for damn sure. So, 
Clint Hickman is joining me. He is the chairman of the County Board of Supervisors in Maricopa County. Let's talk about it personally for a moment. Um, We laughed at some of the accusations. I'm saying we here at the radio station. I've said it on the air in kind of a funny way. You were accused of feeding ballots to your chickens Mm -hmm. and then setting your own barns on fire. Right. Um, First of all, it's a family-owned business. It affects you and your entire family. Um, Can you, let's just address that, just that outrageous accusation can you talk about a little bit about the financial loss to your family and the loss of the chickens? I mean, there was how many thousands of laying hens were yeah. lost? Well, let's talk about that. The, the first thing, the, the the part that was gained by our family is we didn't lo- lose we didn't lose a uh, an employee. Uh, we didn't use a lose a human life, and it was very close. It could have been really bad. Um, it but it was bad enough to lose one hundred sixty five thousand laying hens just before Easter. That's a lot of eggs. That's a lot of hens. It was a dark day. Um, it was the it was the worst day uh, in my business life. Actually, uh, it was the worst day in my brother's business life because both of them one was out of state and one was in Prescott, uh, rushing back. Uh, so, but to get, you know, I'll fold it back politically again. So here I am fighting a fire, and before the flames go out, I start getting phone calls about an internet saying that I'm burning Trump ballots. And then a, and then a week later, um, or not even a week later, three days when people are saying, well, there should be Trump ballots floating all over the, the place. No, Hickman fed them to his chickens and then burned the house down. So, and, and they're sending a, you know, or maybe it's on the other side, sending a message that you need to, you know, you need to be quiet. You need to hush up. It's ridiculous. Let's talk uh, finally, uh, and the reason why I'm saying this is because of all of this fallout with the accusations of stolen elections and your complicity in it. Um, you, What was it like to have people show up at your home with your wife and your children there? Well, thank you for asking about that, Mike. Um, <laughs> you know, first of all, it's against the law to, to – uh, to do something like that, demonstrate in residential areas. And uh, I, I was blessed to have two sheriff's deputies um, there protecting me. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't the greatest feeling having to be holed up in my house uh, with people coming on a Sunday night, uh, demonstrating uh, against, against me and saying that I'm fail, failing to uphold my oath. I would, I, you know, I'm sitting there going, failing to uphold my oath of office and protecting the constitution. And the values I hold dear, and I'm sitting here hiding. No, I'm, I'm having to hide in my house from you guys that want me to walk outside my oath. And for a great discussion on that, look no further than Rusty Bowers and what he went through. He went through two, ten times worse, as his, as his daughter lay dying. So, there's 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 been some real, classic quiet leadership, uh, on display, and there's been absolute horrendous leadership on display for these last two years of my life. Do you believe that the death threats against you and against other people like Rusty Bowers and what you went through personally, not just politically, do you believe that some of that would have gone away or would have not happened had this report gone out er earlier? Well, to take, to go so many steps back, um, this is, these really started uh, catching fire, right? Directly after the election. And then, and then this was going on during the, uh, the request and, and during the Cyber Ninjas audit. Now look at, look what we're at right now. The Cyber Ninjas audit came back with, uh, and I I listened to Ken Bennett yesterday on, uh, with Matt Salmon's show. And he was the Senate liaison. And uh, now watching him step away from it, you know, and being upset. Well, here's why you're upset. Why you're upset is they handed over that Cyber Ninjas report to the the Election Integrity Office of the Attorney General and said, we need further investigation. There was not an audit at all. It was was basically, let's see if if the paper ballots, thankfully, uh, were there. Um, And they counted it and still came up with even more Biden votes. So they handed over this, this report, this audit report, and said, we think there's laws broken, right? The Election Integrity Office then takes it and investigates all of these things. It gives us the ability as the county to really look deep and say, like, what, is, what, are, what are people looking for here? What? So we explain everything. We explain everything within about, what, a two-week time period? Um, and this result 
of him getting handed this report, then is the answers are suppressed. His investigators worked on the county dime, I'm sorry, the state taxpayer dime to come up with something to show the truth. And it sat. It sat through an election. It sat all the way to be handed over uh, to Attorney General Chris Mays. And I think there's, I think absolutely there needs to be a search further. Um, I will tell you, Mike, sometimes you find heroes and sometimes you find zeros. I want to find them both in that office. Clint Hickman is with me. We're going to stay one more segment with Mr. Hickman. We have some questions to ask him about the future, but also some more about this. All this is coming up here in just a moment. Clint Hickman joins us, uh, County Board of Supervisors Chairman, in the middle of this uh, report from uh, the former Attorney General Mark Burnovich in the 2020 election. Uh, let me start with a simple question I probably should have started with. Do you and the other supervisors, and I, I, if you can speak for them, do you feel a sense of vindication now with seeing what this report actually said? You know, partially, uh, I think all of us feel uh, vindicated in some in some ways. Uh, I I do, especially uh, on the political side. When I I watched uh, in the report, it says that there were three uh, politically elected officials that said that they had evidence. Uh, and they either flat out refused to come in or, as they know, if you talk to a law enforcement official, they said, you know, don't don't there is felony charges if we catch you lying. And then all of a sudden their their tune changes, but their tune doesn't change when they're out there fundraising. So I'm a little bit vindicated at that. And I, I hope that everybody understands what what most of this is all about at this point. It's a fundraising tool. And uh, I want people to know that. And the other the other thing is. Um, I, I hope it vindicates me with, with uh, the citizens of, of both Maricopa County and the state. Uh, I certainly would like to hear it. I would certainly like to hear people that stood down and were silent. Uh, my colleagues took, and, my, and the recorder, and even at, at that one point, Adrian Fontes, uh, as he was recorded, we took a severe amount of heat over the last two years. And guess what? We're still standing. We're here. A report has come out. It shows that we were right. We It shows that we stayed within the law, and uh, I'm very happy about that. Um, when you, Was there anything in this report specifically that you saw that surprised you? Yeah, it surprised me. Uh, be, uh, the footnotes surprised me. You know, um, the footnotes were, were telling Pete, you know, basically, hey, uh, even when it when it came to the answer of his, of his interim report, and there were some... It was, sound, sounds like there's some stand-up investigators in, in that area. I think they still work there. Maybe they don't, but they were saying that's wrong. You know, that's 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 not what we found. And uh, that's a surprising thing. Um, I, I think there's going to be more surprises. I think in in Attorney General's office, I, I certainly hope that the entire uh, paperwork is there. Um, and I'd like to find out about that. I heard from someone this morning that's an attorney that said that um, the board withheld evidence from the AG's office, that the report has major holes in it and because they were awaiting evidence that you never provided, and that it was because that report was incomplete. Basically, that it wasn't released because it was an incomplete report because the board withheld evidence. Any truth to that, and can you address that? I know nothing about that. That's that's untrue. There there was a set of attorneys uh, there. Of course, Maricopa County Attorney's Office is pretty huge. Uh, I know nothing about that. Um, I know nothing. I all I ever saw was complete and total co uh, cooperation. And if they said there we withheld for two years, we've withheld that. Why hasn't that made the news? Everybody wanted to be a hero in this space, Mike. I want to be a hero in this space, uh, but I'm not. I'm going to let the I'm going to be prudent about this and let and let the slow wheels turn. Um, so I don't know anything about that. I've not heard that. And every time we've ever were requested of things, it was definitely provided. That's all. That's what I know. All right. So one last question, a little bit off topic. We know that there were issues in 2022 with printers and other things at sites and questions about the election again in Maricopa County, which you and, 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 and Gates have been very forthright about. Right. Um, can you give us an update on where that investigation is and any potential changes you see coming because of what you've learned so far? Mike, I, uh, yes, it was important to both Bill and I uh, to get out there and, uh, to, and say, that hey, we need to have an, 
because we've been through this, an, an independent investigation or inquiry, whatever. Let's find somebody. John Shattig performed that mm -hmm. uh, uh, during during this time frame. Uh, SLI uh, performed that. Packet uh, Watch performed that. I was asked by a reporter, "What's what's the big deal? Just hurry up and and just and just tell us what happened." We all know it was the printers. It's like, do we? I mean, who's going to believe that? The county is not in a space to grade our own homework. So an independent person, they said, well, that didn't work for you ever since. You've been talking about independent investigations. It's like, it works for me. It works for me. I, I want to make sure that the county taxpayer knows that we're not grading our own homework and we're go dil going diligently in there because it might not just be the printers. It might be do we need to do different things about stress testing, all the equipment? Uh, what, it, what does that look like? Uh, could we have found this? Did we find something and just decided to do it anyway? I don't think so, uh, but it could create new standards, new processes, uh, and uh, new procedures to, to run elections smoothly coming up in 2024. That's what I care about. Do you um, have there, How soon do you think you'll get answers? I honestly don't know. I, I've told everybody I'm stepping way to the side. I want I want a complete deep dive and not something that begats more questions. I want a complete deep dive into this by others that we don't control. And um, I honestly don't. I'm not even sending a question to Justice McGregor. I don't want her to feel like there's any stress that we have to get an answer. But the stress for the answer will come like we want to do a better job uh, with the printers and the people and everything else in 2024. It's coming. Will you release the findings of whatever it is in this report. Oh, absolutely. To the public. Absolutely. If we've made mistakes, uh, I want to know about that. And the, and the county voter that votes us into these jobs to look into these things uh, should demand that. And uh, believe me, I'm not going to hold on to it for, uh, you know, three months after an election. That's, that's not happening with me. I appreciate the time as always. Um, and I appreciate you coming down and hopefully this is kind of the beginning of the end of all of this stuff. Mike, I, again, I so much appreciate you being able to to give us a little bit of time, and I'm glad I got to spend a little studio time with you. <laughs> Thanks. That's Clint Hickman, Chairman of the County Board of Supervisors.